hello and welcome to a new video today it's that time of the month where i bring you my wrap up for the month before so this is my august wrap up and it was a pretty darn good one i'm very happy with how august went so in the month of august i read 17 books i did however dnf one we're gonna get the dnf out of the way so I had a feeling this would be a DNF and I'm disappointed that I was right about this, but I DNF Where the Crawl Dead Sing by Delia Owens. Now I said, when I, when I filmed my TBR for this, I did say, and when I filmed my self-destruct for this, because this was on my self-destruct that I filmed back in March, um, I did say that when I bought this, I did not know about the author. I'm not going to go into it, but honestly, look up the author if, if you want to. Um, the author's not a great person. That is an understatement. Um, and I got this before I knew about all of that stuff. Um, and it's just been sat on my shelf. And I'm actually thinking back, have no idea why I got this because it's historical. I don't read historical unless it's a historical fantasy. Um, so it takes place in like between 1952 and 1969. And I had like no interest in reading it i was bored for a lot of it i'm gonna be honest i only read 62 pages and i was bored um so yeah enough about that i'm unhauling it and it's going to a friend so the 17 books i read and completed um it totaled 6029 pages which I think it's the first month in a while that I've hit more than 6,000 pages. So I'm very, very happy with that. And I, I did listen to a lot of audiobooks in August. And altogether, it was 41 hours of audiobook listening time, which I was very happy about. Um, of the books, there were 16 print books and one ebook. Um, and of those, there was also eight audiobook listen alongs. So I got zero two stars zero three stars nine four stars and eight five stars it was a very very good month as you can see and only three of them three only three of them were rereads so and they were three of the five stars so yeah so we're gonna get stuck in and let's do this so first up i read book of night by holly black this was a four star. I really enjoyed this. This is a pretty unpopular opinion I've I've noticed because only a handful of people have actually enjoyed this book, which is a shame. And I will say, if this is the first book by Holly Black that you read, don't make this your de deciding factor as to whether you're going to carry on with Holly Black's writing because I've read quite a few Holly Black books now and this is probably my least favorite um so definitely give other holly black books a go if you didn't like this one and it was your first holly black i do think there was a bit of a struggle with moving from the ya she's used to writing to the adult um it was very i would say new adult not full adult because it was a lot darker like her ya's are quite dark anyway but in a ya sort of way um and this wasn't a huge amount darker than those and i think that's why it got a four not a five because i could just tell that it just it wasn't up to the standard of holly black's writing that i'm used to but i did really enjoy it and i would definitely reread it which is great because i've got three editions of it so yeah i'm really glad i enjoyed this and i really enjoyed buddy reading it and listening to the audiobook along with the physical book because i really like the audiobook which again is an unpopular opinion because everyone seems to be disliking the audiobook but i really enjoyed it but oh well next up i've just found a bookmark i was looking for it was still in this book um so next up is Lake's Edge by Lindor Clipstone. I was very excited to read this because um, I was recommended it on the basis that it has Crimson Peak vibes. And I wasn't disappointed. So this was a four star as well. I really enjoyed this. I really liked the character development. It did feel a little bit rushed in points, especially scenes as it's a duology and there is another book to come. But apart from the pacing being a little bit off in parts, I really enjoyed the characters and the world. The narrator of the audiobook is really good. So if you want to consider the audiobook, 
I recommend. Um, but I really like the like the character developments and the relationship developments, not just the romantic relationship in this, but also the like friendships. Um, I really enjoyed the development of those and seeing just how the characters get on. But I really enjoyed this and it definitely did give Crimson Peak vibes in the setting, not in the plot, which I was expecting the plot as well, but it wasn't in the plot, but also monsters and magic. So you can't say no to that. Next up was my reread of Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. <laughs> I said I was going to be rereading it before release and I did. I reread it the week before it came out. I loved it even more the second time reading it. Um, I love everything about Levi and B. It is my everything, my world, and I love them to pieces. Um, obviously, this was a five star. Obviously. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited now that where it's out and people have started reading it. And I keep getting messages of various friends saying, oh my God, I love Love on the Brain. And I'm like, yes, this is the love hypothesis all over again. This is my legacy and I love it. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love this book to pieces and expect to see me rereading it every two months like I do with Love Hypothesis. Next up was my reread of Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass. This is my favourite book in the series and there is one main reason for that. Rowan Whitethorn. I love Rowan with my whole heart. I love this book. I love seeing Selena's character progression and learning about Selena's past and also seeing the different side. There is a thing in this one that breaks me. Um, there's many things that break me. But then it's a Sarah J Mass book, so would it be a Sarah J Mass book if it didn't break me? Probably not. But I really enjoyed my reread of this, and I'm very excited to be continuing my reread of this series. Next up, we have Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This is the first Juno Dawson I have read, and it will not be the last. This was incredible. This was a five star, and I am not shocked in the slightest. I loved this. There were three POVs. And I really liked how you could really differentiate between the three characters. And I really liked Neve in particular was my favourite character. And I really liked seeing like how she dealt with things based on what was happening, which I can't tell you about because spoilers. But also I've just realised I was wrong. It's four POVs, not three. Ignore me. It's been a long day. Anyway, but one of my favourite things about this is that Juno Dawson has basically written the witches into our actual British history. So there is a mention of like um, like Henry VIII and his wives and I'm just in awe of how well this was written and I'm just, I cannot wait for the second book. I think this is a duology. I could be wrong, it could be a trilogy, but I'm pretty sure it's a duology. Um, and the second book doesn't come out till next year, which I am gutted about because <sighs> I will say, if you want to read this, maybe wait until nearer the time of the second one coming out because I'm kind of regretting my decisions but also I'm so glad I read it now because I'm obsessed. Next up we have Maroda by L.L. McNeil slash L.L. McRae. Um, I really enjoyed this book. This was a four star. Now I have this paperback which is the original version this first book has been slightly rewritten very recently and it's currently only available in ebook. I think the paperback for the new ones are going to be out like available soon. But um, this is the original one and I did start reading this along with the audiobook. Um, and I ended up um, not particularly loving how like it, it felt a little bit disjointed in parts. Then I got the ebook for this book the new version and I read the ebook and I am so so happy I did because I had so much fun reading this this was such an incredible world that's been built with like dragons and sky pirates and different like different like species and how they live together in this world and there's a war on the horizon and it's just 
so well written and i really enjoyed reading it um I cannot wait to continue this series and I will be purchasing the rest of the series. The rest of the series isn't having any tweaks done to it. So I can happily purchase the rest of the series to date without worrying about that. And I will be doing that because I really enjoyed this. And Lauren is an indie author and an incredible one at that. She is such a lovely person. And this is the second book I've read by her. I have read, this was her debut, but I have read... Um, the Iron Crown, which is the first book in a different series, which is absolutely incredible. And I adored that with everything. Um, so yeah, very happy. I loved this. And I finally read it after having, I think I've had the audiobook for this for about four years. I'm really bad. I know. But better late than never. It's fine. Next up, we have Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. Obviously, this was a five star. And let's just appreciate how many tabs um blue was every time i cried cassie does this to me um i will say i have literally just got off of the live show for this and it was so much fun talking about this and like getting to actually talk about the ending of this trilogy and just the character development of some of the characters in this was just a literal chef's kiss. It was amazing and I loved every second of it. It breaks me so much, but it also sets so many things up, especially for the Last Hour series. And I'm just so, so I say it every month, but I'm really enjoying hosting by the Angel along because I'm just absolutely loving rereading these tabbing them talking about them on the live shows and just sharing them with my friends and you guys that are joining in and i just absolutely love this series so much so i do have 10 more books but i'm actually going to show you to them in two groups because these were for um dedicated vlogs that are going to be coming in the next two weeks um so i will just briefly go over them so first up is the disney villains series so i read mistress of all evil mother knows best the odd sisters evil thing and cold hearted and all five of these actually got four stars i did enjoy some a lot more than others um cold hearted was my favorite of these five but of the series overall to date it was my second favorite um, but I really enjoyed reading these practically back to back. I had so much fun filming that vlog and it's made me want to do more vlogs like that. But I really enjoyed how we got to see, because these are from the villain's point of view, we get to see what happens in their lives to get them to the points we see them in the Disney films. So obviously um, we get to see how Maleficent's childhood was, which led her to becoming how she is in Sleeping Beauty. Mother Knows Best, we get to see Gothel's upbringing and just whole life leading up to her taking Rapunzel as a baby and then it briefly goes over the events of Tangled and I really enjoyed that. Um, I will say Mother Knows Best was a tad too long for my liking. Like, not I'm not saying that I don't like long books because obviously I do. Um, but for the story, I feel like it was longer than it needed to be to get the point across. But I still really enjoyed it. It was still a four star. Um, the Odd Sisters is the one that I went into completely unknowing because the odd sisters are characters that have been added in to this world and links all of these books so this is very much a series it's not a series of standalones like you do have to read these in order um and i really liked how they brought in the odd sisters and then we get an actual book for the odd sisters so i really enjoyed that one um evil thing obviously cruella deville we get to see what led her to the moment of her taking those puppies in 101 Dalmatians. And then Cold Hearted made me feel sorry for Lady Tremaine, which I didn't think was possible. But yeah, th this was a tough read. And I just like, my heart went out for Lady Tremaine and Anastasia and Drusilla. But um, this one really, this I think this one was just, yeah, it got me. It got me. Um, and then the other series I read, 
<laughs> was the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert. So I um, I finished this series. I had read Desperate Measures back in January and then I've finished the series now. So I read Learn My Lesson, A Worthy Opponent, The Beast, The Sea Witch and Queen Takes Rose. Again, you do need to read these in order because they very much follow on from each other. Um, and one of the things, main things I liked about these was the fact that as well as following on from each other, they do sort of like hint at the next book. So in Learn My Lesson, Tink is like a fairly big character in Hook Features. In A Worthy Opponent, Gaton, who is Gaston, um, is pretty relevant. In The Beast, Ursa has a fairly big part. Um, in The Sea Witch, Malone has a fairly big part. Um, Aurora is relevant in all of them leading up to queen takes rose um but ratings they all got five stars except the sea witch which you'll see in my vlog if you watch it it broke me that the ursula book was my least favorite in the series i just watch the vlog to find out my feelings on that i talk both spoilers and not spoilers and i warn you before i talk about spoilers so yeah but overall this series was incredible and the beast was my favorite which i did not see coming whatsoever um but i loved how these deal with um like poly relationships and consent and safe words and kink in a safe way and i just really liked how everything was done just so well and like with the aftercare being so important because it is and i just loved everything about it and the smart was literally i think possibly the best smart i've read in books before it's not as good as some smart that i've read in fanfic but in books this series is the one it might ruin your childhood forever but it's so worth it so they were all the books I read in August. I'm very happy with my reading in August. Um, I did take part in Camp Spoopathon, um, which I did complete. I made it back to Spoop Cabin on the last day. Go me. Yay. Um, and then I also have low-key been taking part in Magical Readathon. Um, but I do think I'm going to have to double-check what books I picked for those because... Um, I know for a fact where the crawdad sing was for one of those and I'm going to have to think about what else fits that prompt because I DNF'd it but also I didn't get to one of the other books that was on that TBR um, which was Adrift which I'm gutted because I really wanted to read that but um, but yeah so you know I had a great month but also I didn't have a great month <laughs> with, with one of my readathons um, mostly because I had to get those books read for um for the vlogs i was doing because obviously i'm going on holiday and i was doing those specifically so they could go up while i'm on holiday but you know i still had a really good reading month even if i didn't get to everything that i wanted to get to it was an amazing month and i'm really happy but let me know in the comments below what your favorite book you read in august was i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time bye